and maybe a lot of you are like me, where you have all these great memories from your childhood, right? With Halloween. And of course, what do we want? We want our children to also have great memories. Holidays are often very important. Traditions are very important. But sometimes we can assign so much value and importance that we end up stressed, right? This can happen without diet restrictions where you overstress about things. But definitely can happen when suddenly the holiday that you're planning for your child isn't gonna look, look like that. And I just want you to give yourself space to like, maybe you haven't even thought about that, to feel that, to think about it. And then to make sure you're in a healthy place as you approach your child. Because if you talk to your child and either they've always had diet restrictions or maybe they're just starting, maybe they're eight, maybe they're nine, right? These are harder ages to do big changes and you're thinking, oh, this is, so, you know, you tell your child like, Sarah, this is horrible that you have to be gluten-free for Halloween. That's gonna make her feel horrible, right? So always focusing on the positives. If you need to vent, do not vent to your child. That's not a healthy practice. I know that might've happened to you when you were a child, but we're not venting to our children, a spouse, a friend, some stranger on the internet can message me. <laughs> Just get it out, but then be in a healthy place to be excited for your kid and give them room to feel anything they need to feel with all of the things going on. That's okay. Let them feel those things, but that doesn't have to impact you. If you know they have to be gluten free, then you can let go. It's okay for your child to be sad. That is okay. I'm kind of going down a different road here, but we've learned a lot on our journey being gluten free, autism, a lot of things and letting your child be sad is healthy because then you can model for them and guide them through that. Let's get started talking about actually the positive fun things you can do right now to make this a great experience for you and your kids. So first of all, you can't forget the classroom, right? If you have a kid in class, who is their kid in class? And make sure to keep watching. I'm gonna share some of my favorite tips, actually at the end, what to do with trick-or-treating that might surprise you or get you excited and looking forward to doing trick-or-treating. So keep watching. At the beginning of the school year, I always recommend putting some fun snacks that your teacher can have stashed, your child's teacher. So if there's any surprise kind of parties that come up, you can give them to them, uh, or they can without having to let you know. But definitely do this for your any Halloween party. Try to bring in something fun or special if you can. If you cannot bring in something fun or special, maybe you work all day, I've been there, just have something at home and let them know, right? Let them know that that's coming. And then of course, we often have holiday parties, right? So if you're going to a Halloween party, you wanna be prepared. If you're not doing it at your own house where we can normally control more things. So definitely let the hostess know, oh, by the way, you know, Sarah's gluten-free now, so we will bring some of our own snacks. Just give me a heads up because I don't want you to feel offended if we don't eat something, blah, blah, blah. Just giving them a heads up is really good. Talk to your child, make sure they know and are on the same page with what to eat and what not to eat. Tell them how proud you are of them, making these choices and just making it safe. And of course, I, when my kids have been on restrictions, I tend to eat the same way so they're not feeling excluded. I know a lot of you moms do this too, and that's great. And if you are a mom trying to be gluten-free, trying to keep you, your body healthy, your family healthy. I actually have a free Facebook group where I share all my best tips and tricks um, and recipes on Facebook. You can go join there free, go check out the link below. Uh, we'd love to have you in there. There's a bunch of goodies right as soon as you join with some gluten-free meal plans and things like that. And I have lots of great recipes for the holidays and other tips, health tips in there too. So make sure to go check that out, but let's keep going because I still have some of my favorite tips coming. What is the biggest deal for Halloween? Trick-or-treating, right? Trick-or-treating is where the most fun is for most of the people. Now, if you're going trick-or-treating or maybe going to a church event or some kind of community thing, it can feel overwhelming because you know your child will get a gluten-free item and no one wants to be sitting there and be like, he can't have that that's not gluten-free, right? That's not fun, we don't want that vibe. No one wants to be that mom. If you wanna be that mom, fine, be that mom. I don't wanna be that mom. So these tips are for you. First of all, definitely if you're going to some kind of organized event, you can check in and see what they're planning to do. If you're going to neighbor's houses or family houses, you can just 
make sure they know ahead of time that you're not doing gluten. But a lot of times we can't control these things, right? So here's what you can do without even having to talk to anybody, which is generally my preferred way to know how to talk to people. <laughs> what you can do is talk to your child and let them know while we're trick-or-treating, we're not gonna be eating snacks. We're not gonna eat any of the treats. We're gonna save those. So definitely make sure they're not hungry. Feed them a good dinner. Or you can say, we're gonna have only one or two. So they're ones that you pull out and let them have. This is important, right? Because you know these kids, they get that bag of candy and they just wanna to go to town. It's the best day of their life. So we prep them ahead of time. We don't say, oh my gosh, no, no, you can't eat that. Right, not in the moment, we plan ahead. Makes things work a lot better. What you're gonna do is when you get home, this is my idea that I think is really fun anyway, is you're gonna have stuff ready. So you can either have uh, gluten-free or dairy-free snacks that you know they like, that are special to them. You can have a game, a toy, uh, which might be a nice option if you're just like, this is too much candy. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna have them trade in. You could either kind of go all out with this and let them almost shop with their old candy and they get to choose things. Or you can just literally like say one for one or they're just gonna swap. You can also do things like game time or watching a movie, you know, let them turn it in for something. So they're still like coming home with fun prizes, still getting something fun, still creating these good memories but not eating the stuff that's gonna hurt their bodies. Hope this has been helpful for you. Let me know if these tips are great, what one you like best, what ones you do, I would love to hear. And make sure to go check out our community on Facebook. I would love to have you there with the other moms who are just trying to do this gluten-free thing, wanting to feel great instead of just kind of surviving, which was a lot of my story, where I was just surviving and I was not feeling awesome. The doctor said my labs were fine and I was like, I don't feel fine. So making some choices, changing a few things up, trying some different supplements that fit my body, I feel like a different person. So I share everything in that group. Go check it out. Happy Halloween.